In this video, we are going to determine the unknown formula of an oxide. First question, what is an oxide? Well, it's simply a compound that contains oxygen as it's not a metal. A couple of examples, here's an iron three oxide and here's a lead four oxide. So the thing about this that's gonna be helpful in our lesson is that when you heat these chemicals, the uh, oxygen will essentially evaporate off and we'll just be left with a pure metal. So here's a question, a typical one. Um, and we've got a couple of masses right away. So we've got a mass of silver oxide and we've got a mass of silver. What's the empirical formula of this compound? Uh, in previous questions of this, our first step would always be to assume 100 grams and uh, proceed from there. But these ones are not in percentages. They're already in grams, so we can skip the assuming step. But let's just see what we've got here. So we've got our mass of silver oxide. That's right from the question. And we've got our mass of silver. So if we subtract these off, we should be able to figure out that we have 0.32 grams of silver. Now, essentially we are done using this number 4.626, that is done. We are left with these two numbers and these are the two values that we're going to proceed with. We need to know the mass of the individual elements here. So once we have some masses, well, when in doubt, let's find the moles here. So we'll firstly find our moles of silver. So we've got one mole of silver weighing 107.87, divide those values, we should get about that many moles of silver. We'll repeat with the oxygen. 0.32 grams of oxygen. One mole weighs 16 grams. And when you divide there, we get to that value. Uh, next step, last thing we'll do is we'll write our two elements and I've written the mole numbers as subscripts there. In this step, we're going to divide through by the lowest mole number, which is 0.02. And when you do that, you should find that you get exactly two silvers and you get exactly one oxygen. If these did not work out to be whole numbers, we would simply multiply until we got them to be whole numbers. And at that point, we would have our empirical formula.